Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for coming to earth to seek out and save lost people like Zacchaeus and like us. Grant us the joy of our salvation today and every day. I pray these things in your precious name. Amen. Please be seated. Have you ever been surprised by love? Surprised by love. Have you ever been surprised that someone you thought was interesting or attractive or cool happened to be interested in you too? I hope so. Let me give you an example from my own life. When I was 13 years old, uh, the summer after my eighth grade year, my mother said I could do anything I wanted that summer, but I had to go to this week-long Christian camp in August. Ugh. <laughs> no thank you. Christian camp? No thank you. But I was a good kid. I was obedient. I was something of a mama's boy. And there were going to be girls there. And I just finished four years at an all-boys school, so that was somewhat attractive. And it was on Martha's Vineyard, so it could have been worse. So I said, okay, I will go to this week-long Christian camp. Now, when I arrived, uh, there were this group of older students, uh, juniors and seniors, uh, two boys, two girls, who had spent the previous few weeks together at another camp and had stuck around for a further week. And me being younger, you know, a rising freshman, I was anxious, I was self-conscious, I was insecure, and I thought that these older kids were just about uh, the coolest people I had ever met. I still remember their names. There was John and Caroline and Natalia and Denny. And for some reason, they chose to take little old 13-year-old, you know, barely pubescent RJ under their wing. And I remember the second or third day we were there, uh, they said, hey, RJ, tonight, um, after everyone goes to bed, we're going to sneak out of our cabins and go to the tennis courts because the sky is clear, it's a beautiful night for stars, and we want to invite you to come along. So around 11 o'clock, just be watching for us, and we'll kind of come to the, the door, and you can come outside, we'll go down to the tennis courts. I said, that, that sounds amazing. A few hours later, they came back, and they said, okay, 11 o'clock is too early. We're going to go for midnight instead, an hour later. The first thought that entered my anxious mind was, they're trying to ditch me. They're trying to get rid of me. They've come to their senses and they've realized that I'm basically a fifth wheel here. They have no use for me. And so they're hoping that if I'm looking for them at midnight, they can sneak out at 11 o'clock and I won't notice. So that night I went to bed. And when I went to bed and the lights went out, I watched that cabin door like a hawk. I knew that Denny was a few doors down. And in order to get to the tennis courts, he would have to pass by my door. And I was sure that when 11 o'clock rolled around, I was going to see him silently slinking by. And I was going to get up and go out the door and confront him. How dare you try to ditch me? But 11 o'clock came and went. No Denny. 11.15. 11.30. 11.45. And then almost exactly at the stroke of midnight, under moonlight, I see this figure come by the screen door and lean in and go, RJ, RJ. And I got up and I went outside and we met John and he walked down to the tennis courts. And as we were walking through the woods, I confessed to them. I said, you know, guys, when you changed the time by an hour, I was pretty sure that you were trying to get rid of me. And I'll never forget John putting his arm around me. He'd known me for about two days at this point. He said, RJ, we would never do that to you. That was the week I really became a Christian. I'd been raised in the church, uh, but that was the week that I really came to faith and I experienced a call to ministry. And here I am, you know, 35 plus years later as a result of what I experienced that week. And a big part of it was hearing the Christian message, what we call the gospel the message of Jesus for the first time in a way that I could understand, that made sense to my heart and my mind, made sense of my experience. But I think also a big part of my conversion that week was being surprised by love, being surprised by people caring about me, taking me in, people uh, whose love, whose affection, whose interest I thought I was unworthy of. 
I think I'm here in partially because of those, those four students, those two guys, those two girls who surprised me by caring about me. Let me give you another example, a little more jarring, perhaps. <clears throat> Gary Ridgway. Does that name mean anyone to anybody? Gary Ridgway, also known as the Green River Killer is at least the second most prolific serial killer in American history. Uh, in 2003, he pled guilty and was convicted of the murders of 48 people. But by his own confession, and they've done more research, they think he probably killed more like 90, somewhere between 90 and 100. During his sentencing, uh, the families of his victims were given an opportunity to see him face to face and to tell him uh, how they felt about him, about those they'd lost, about what they'd experienced. And you can imagine the kinds of things they said. They talked about their loss. They talked about their pain. They talked very specifically about the, the loved ones that he had deprived them of. They also expressed uh, rightly their rage, their anger. One person uh, called him an animal and wished him a long suffering cruel death another person told him he said you know you are going to hell which is exactly what you deserve and that type of emotion is very it's under it's understandable in light of what they had experienced and what he had done <clears throat> and then one of the fathers of his victims got up to speak. And I swear, you can watch this video on YouTube if you go search Green River Killer Forgiveness. I'm giving it away a little bit. This man stood up. He looked like hippie Santa Claus. He had a very long white beard, long white hair. He had uh, rainbow suspenders, just ridiculous. And he got up and he looked at the Green River Killer, looked at Gary Ridgway and said, Mr. Ridgway, there are people here who hate you but I'm not one of them. You've made it very hard on me to do what I believe God wants me to do, which is to forgive. But I forgive you, sir. I forgive you. And at that point, Gary Ridgway, who had been sitting there this entire time through all these testimonies, just stone-faced, expressionless, every bit the serial killer, the monster that you'd expect him to be. When he heard those words of mercy, of love from that man, he broke down in tears. It's a powerful video and I encourage you to go find it and, and not, to, uh, not to feel the love and the forgiveness that Jesus offers. Today's gospel is a story about a man who is surprised by love a man who doesn't deserve love. Zacchaeus is a traitor to his people. He is an agent of the oppressive, occupying, murderous Roman Empire. He's in league with the enemy. And furthermore, in order to enrich himself, he has cheated his countrymen. The only way he gets paid is if he collects more in taxes from his compatriots than he owes to the Roman Empire. And he's done very well for himself. He's a rich traitor. On top of that, he's short. And there's nothing wrong with being short, but people can be cruel and children can be cruel. And I wonder a little bit if <clears throat> Zacchaeus has experienced some things in his life which led him into this profession that he chose, into working for the enemy. In any event, he hears that Jesus is coming to town so he runs ahead, climbs a tree, hoping just to get a glimpse of this famous preacher from Nazareth. And eventually Jesus walks by and sees him and calls him by name. He knows Zacchaeus' name. Zacchaeus, come down here right now. Uh-oh, Zacchaeus must have thought. I've been found out. I've been exposed. Now I'm going to get it. Jesus is going to embarrass me. Call me out in front of all these people. And I deserve it. Why didn't I just stay home? 
But that's not what Jesus does. Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Jesus shocks everyone. Most of all Zacchaeus by inviting himself into his home, inviting himself to be his guest. The writer of the gospel, uh, Luke says, all who saw it began to grumble, began to complain and said, he has gone to be the guest of one who is a sinner. Doesn't Jesus know who this is, what he's done, the sins he's committed, the treachery, the, the betrayal, the, the pain, the fevery? Doesn't Jesus know? Of course he does. And yet he says, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. Jesus seeks out this man, this sinner, this person who deserves judgment, who deserves condemnation and rejection and calls him out by name and surprises him with love. What I want you to see today is that we are all Zacchaeus. We have all committed sins which put us beyond the bounds of acceptance. We have all betrayed God and betrayed other people. We've all cheated God and cheated other people. We are all under judgment. None of us is what we know we ought to be. And if I can be even a little more scandalous, I think it's biblical to say that each of us even has a little bit of the Green River killer in us. Because what does Jesus say? He says, anger is the same thing as murder. To be angry with someone in your heart is the same thing as to have killed them. And I, I'm pretty sure that there are a lot of people in here who you can think of someone who has injured you so deeply, hurt you so much, that you kind of rather that they didn't exist. We all have a little bit of that killer in our hearts. And yet Jesus seeks out each one of us today and every day. And he knows our name. And he says, I must stay at your house. I must eat with you. I must be your friend. I must save you. I must be a part of your life. Jesus looks past our sin, our shame, our brokenness, and he surprises us constantly with love and presence and blessing. We are in stewardship season. The time of year when we, we all think about the blessings we've received, the love we've received, the presence we've received, the, the gift that this place is to us, the relationships we have here, what we've received from God and through other people. And we pray about what we might give back, give back to God's work in and through this church for the coming year. And so as we're thinking about that, I want you to hear again how Zacchaeus responds to the surprising love of Jesus. Half of my possessions, Lord, he says, I will give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will pay back four times as much. Zacchaeus' life is transformed by the love of Jesus, even as my life was transformed all those years ago. He is surprised by love, and his heart is moved towards gratitude and generosity. It's my prayer that we would each experience the surprising love of Jesus for us as we are, that we'd be changed and transformed and uh, bear witness to that through our gratitude and generosity.